Hey, welcome back, it's Christian. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can assign some controllers to our set and how we can move around and start to arrange our songs on the fly. Now, um, you can see that we've got the set that we've been creating and you can see that I've gone ahead and added some marker points in it. Now, the reason I love Ableton so much and the reason I use Ableton is that it allows me to move around the song and arrange in a live environment. So I'm not playing to the loop, I'm playing with the loop. If I decide I want to do the chorus again, I can. If I decide I want to do the bridge again, I can. The great thing about the way that these tracks have been produced and the power of using them in Ableton is we can do exactly that. Now you can control them using a number of different controllers. It might be a foot controller, it might be notes on your keyboard, it might be buttons on an iPad, it might be a trigger finger, it might be a drum samplers, a whole manner of things. The common thing is that most of them will use MIDI. The one that I've chosen to go for is a, a controller called the Soft Step Controller made by a company called Keith McMillan and I can just assign lots of different bun buttons and lots of different banks to it. So let me show you how you go about doing that. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your MIDI controller is connected and working to your computer. Now that will vary depending on your controller and depending on your operating system. So refer to your controller's manual to do that. Mine is, and the next thing you do is go to Live, go to Preferences, go into MIDI and Sync, and then find the controller that you're using uh, and make sure that it's turned on. Now because mine's a USB, it's actually not coming in on one of these MIDI ports, it's coming straight in and I know that it's working, I've used it. Um, if you're using a MIDI port off a Firewire device, then you might want to come in here and do it. It's quite simple to do. Um, these are internal drivers that I've been using, but up here you can see that I've got inputs on Firewire and outputs. And you would just find the device that you're using and make sure that it's working in there. Great. The next thing you do is come into your song and start assigning some controllers. Now, if you come over here and click this MIDI button, you'll see a lot of things turn blue. And everything that turns blue can be assigned a specific MIDI controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab my controller. The first thing I want to do is I want to assign um, a play button. So I'm going to click on play and I'm going to click on my play button on my controller. Now my controller is set up in a way that I, I follow a similar format. So most songs will follow a similar arrangement really. Um, and I tend to have intro verse one chorus bridge, verse two, second chorus, final part of the song and those tend to be the bits that I, I move around. I've also got a couple of expression pedals which allow me to control volume and I'll show you that as well. So let's just zoom in a little bit on the first song, Let God Arise, and I want to assign a button for intro, so I'm going to press my intro button. I want to assign a button for verse 1, I want to assign a button for chorus and all I'm doing is tapping on these with the key with the mouse and then tapping the button on my controller. And you can see that it's assigning these MIDI notes. Verse 2, chorus 2. If I scroll along a little bit, I'm also going to start assign a bridge. And I'm going to assign an outro. And that'll do me for now. Then I'm going to hit the next bank on my controller, which is going to move me along. And I'm going to start assigning some controllers for you alone can rescue. So again, intro, first one. Oh, push a little bit harder. There we go. Chorus, first two. Chorus two. There's a link section here, which I might well use. So I'm going to put the link section in. I'm going to put the bridge in and I'm going to hit the final chord now when I hit final chord now I'm actually going to hit one of the buttons I've already used so let me hit that again one second let me map it to there as well and you'll see that when I map it to the second place it says it conflicts and do you want to replace it so I'm going to click no and you'll see that it'll disappear so let me take that one out and I'm there I'm going to put that one brilliant finally a stop button so I'm going to sign a master stop. Now this stop is the same on any bank that I'm on. It's the same button. Uh, and I've got a volume pedal or an expression pedal connected to my controller, which means I can assign a volume. And to, what I'm actually going to assign that to is this slider. So I clicked on the button to take me to session view, clicked on that slider, and I'm going to assign that volume controller to the lead vocal. So that means I can actually turn up and down the lead vocal. So it might be that I route the lead vocal into our ears, um, and then I can control the volume of that. So let me zoom out, and the wonderful thing about Ableton is that I can actually um, do two things. I can line up the trigger, 
and then I can actually play the trigger. So if I hit the intro of You Alone Can Rescue, which I'm on the right patch, I don't know if you saw there, but if you look over here, let me zoom in, there's a little orange line that will line up with the intro of it. So let me select the verse. You can see that orange line moves to verse, back to intro, back to verse. I'm doing that using my feet and chorus and so on. Now these aren't playing anything, but it's the marker from which it's going to start. So I can actually start from any song. So if I hit back on my controller and go to the previous bank and hit intro, I go all the way back to the intro of Let God Arise. If I double tap stop, it goes to the beginning of the entire set. So stop once, stop twice, goes to the set. Let me show you that again. So select verse. You can see the orange mark has moved to verse. Hit stop twice, stop, stop, and it's gone all the way back to the beginning. Now let's hit play. Here's the guitar intro, four bars, two, three, four. And join in, two, three, four. Okay, so let's say I want to go back and do the intro again. I can hit the intro button now. And on the next one, it goes back. Let me do that again. Next one. And again. Now I'm going to turn the click off just so you can hear what I'm doing here because the way Ableton works. And join in, two, three, four. I'm just going to hit stop a minute. The way Ableton works is I can press the controller at any time in that bar, but it will only trigger on the next one. So if you listen out for the accent on the on the click, you'll hear that much easier. So let me go back and trigger off the intro again. So intro, line it up, press. And join. And the one. Okay, let's move to verse one. And if you leave it, it'll play through the normal arrangement, which is great. So really cheeky this time, I'm going to jump into chorus two rather than chorus one. You see that? So quite seamlessly we jumped from chorus, what would have been chorus one, all the way to chorus two. And at the end of this, rather than go to breakdown, we're going to go to verse two. And I'm doing all of this just using my cheap controllers and my foot controller. Now when we get to the end of the song, we've got a couple of options. So if I was to play it from this chorus, oh, so from the outro, so I'll just play that. I'm doing that using the mouse this time. Now because of the way we set our arrangement, this is going to automatically play our next song, You Alone Can Rescue, as we set up in the previous video. But let's say I didn't want to do that, when it gets to this final chord here, I can hit the stop button. And it will stop. I can then hit intro for You Alone Can Rescue and it's queued up, and when I click my play button, You Alone Can Rescue can start. So let's just have a bit of a play around with that one. Now remember that I mapped that volume pedal up to the lead vocal. So let me show you how that works. The volume pedal is currently all the way open. Now let me stand on that volume pedal and wind it down. And back up again. All the way up. And all the way down. You could do that with anything. You could do that with a click, you could do that with a cues, one of the drum traps, anything. You can sign as many controllers as you've got. So let me wind the vocal back in. Let's say I want to go back and do verse one again. So 
worth knowing with this song that actually the Who Alone starts just before the marker. Um, so the marker actually comes in on the first beat of the bar, but the Who Alone comes in halfway through. So you need to know that if you're jumping around. So you would, on the one, you would start actually singing. So we've got here. Repeat first one. So you go, Who Alone can rescue, pressure button, Who, and then in. Rescue, Who Alone can save. But again, we can jump to bridge. And bridge again. And let's go back and do the leap. And stop. We can line up any section, so if I really wanted to, I could hit chorus of um, the first song there and then hit play and straight in. I've got a right. Or jump to the final bit. Go back to chorus. Chorus two. And the final. And so on. It gives us loads of different options there for playing around with, and I've just made some of them um, quite smooth and some of them deliberately a little bit awkward just so you can see how it works. But you press the controller and it'll trigger on the next one. And it gives you complete freedom to move around. Now it might be that you only want to set up a, a link for the chorus. So you can just keep looping on the chorus if you want to. Or it might be that at the end of the song you want to be able to go back and do the song again or move on. Ableton's brilliant. Once you get it set up, you can simply do it. One final thing to show you. If you click on the MIDI button over here, then you get an extra button pop up here which is called the Mapping Browser. If you click on that, you'll then see all the buttons that we've located. So you can see the MIDI notes that we've assigned and what we've assigned them to. So I hope that helps. Have loads of fun, be creative, experiment, uh, and you'll find yourself navigating your own way around your arrangements in no time at all. God bless, take care.